Hello YouTube and welcome back to another sensor spotlight. Today we're going to be looking at the random sensor, some of the useful attributes for it in Python. So this sensor is the smallest of the small. This is the one with the least attributes, the least settings, and in my opinion the least usefulness uh, because you can easily generate some quote-unquote more random stuff uh, with Python, but we're going to cover it anyway. So the way that the random sensor is meant to work is it will essentially flip a coin and see whether it's heads or tails, but instead of heads or tails, it will use uh, true or false. So whenever it randomly chooses true, it will set the sensor to positive and trigger the connected controllers. Now, the sensor is meant to turn not positive immediately after turning positive, uh, but in practice it doesn't appear to do that. Instead, it seems to stay positive um, unless you have tap mode turned on. Uh, an example of that is here I have a random sensor connected to an AND controller which is applying a motion. Whenever I play the game, you'll notice that the cube moves uh, but it doesn't move in very small increments. It kind of moves, continues moving for a random amount, and then stops. Uh, with tap mode on, however, you can see it randomly will jolt to the right, so it'll randomly apply this movement. Uh, so that's fine. Um, being that I don't think the random sensor is really that useful, uh, I couldn't really come up with an example for it, uh, other than having the cube move randomly. So now we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at the sensor. Okay, so here we are looking at the sensor, and of course it has all of the stuff that the always sensor has, and it has the seed option here. And if you don't know anything about generating random numbers, most methods of generating a random number uh, require a seed or a number to start from. Uh, so this is basically a number that some algorithm uh, uses to generate a random signal. Um, so really there's not much to say about this setting. The number really holds uh, no serious meaning, uh, so there's not really much to explain about it. Uh, it does go between 0 and 1000. Um, and that's really it for the random sensor itself. So now we're going to move on to Python. Okay, so here we are in Python. Of course, we can get it the same way as all of the other sensors. So moving on, we have configuration attributes. And the only one that we have there is the seed attribute. And this will either return or it will set the seed number, which is the same as that seed setting on the sensor itself. Moving on we have status attributes. The only one here is last draw and this just returns what the random sensor got uh, the last time it did a coin flip. Uh, so for instance this is either going to return true or false. Um, so if the sensor were to evaluate to true it would return true. If it were to evaluate to false the sensor or the last draw would return false. Uh, so here I am printing it out and if we take a look at the Blender console we can see we have true, false, true, false, true. And earlier on doing some other testing we have a bunch of trues. Uh, here we have a huge row of trues and, and a huge row of falses and a bunch of stuff like that. Now, I said that I really don't like the random sensor. Well, if I don't like the random sensor, but I want to generate something randomly, what do I do? Well, luckily for us, in Python, there is a random module. So we can just simply do import random. And one of the most basic functions of the random module is random dot random. So for instance we can do rand float 
equals random dot random open parentheses close parentheses and this is simply going to return a floating point number between zero and one so we may get like a 0 0.55 so on and so on or we may get a one or a zero so here I will just quickly print rand float and then if I play the game and view the console we can see we get a couple of floating point numbers and the real reason that I would strongly suggest using the random module as opposed to the random sensor is that it is immensely more random or at least it appears to be as a normal player uh, I would have no way of predicting what the next number is uh, whereas with using just the random sensor if you start with the same seed each time each time you start the game it will do the same random sequence uh, but I think I've covered the sensor uh, I'll probably cover the random module uh, in a, another video some other time because it is a fairly useful module. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to try and help you out. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below or use the form in the link in the description. Next time, we are covering the final sensor in this series. We are covering the ray sensor, but until then, I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.